Hey guys, welcome back to Bombit TV. Guys, if you want to check it out, what are the satanic verses by Dr. Shabi Ali? I still get straight into this. Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. My pleasure to be on. We're hearing a lot about satanic verses these days. You know, this is the title of a book that Salman Rushdie wrote in 1988, and it has caused much fear around the world. But Dr. Shabir, I want to talk about where that term came from. What are the satanic verses? Yeah, so the, the term uh, satanic verses uh, is used in modern academic literature uh, to refer to so, some purported verses of the Quran, uh, which, uh, according to some Islamic narratives, um, were once recited by our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and taken to be a part of the Quran, uh, but uh, later on denounced as uh, having a satanic origin. Um, so, uh, to give more details about that, uh, the story says that when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was reciting the 53rd chapter of the Quran, uh, at a certain point, uh, it, it, this, the, the chapter as it is now, in verses 19 to 20, uh, says something like this, uh, uh, have you not uh, considered Alat and Al Uzza, which are names of two of the gods, uh, goddesses that were worshipped in Arabia at the time, which uh, Islam comes to denounce mm -hmm. and say there's the pagan only one goddesses, god. Yeah. yeah, so these are pagan goddesses. Um, and, and then it says Wamanata Thalithat Al Ukhra, and then Al, al Manat, the third one, the, the other one. So, and then the, the next verse, as it is in the Quran nowadays, uh, it says. Uh, uh, is it that, that you want sons for yourself, but you want to give the daughters to God? Tilka uh, idan kismatin deza. That would be an unfair distribution. So, so God is, in, according to the Quran here, I mean, the way that it's worded, we can say that God is using their own sort of presuppositions against them. They, they presuppose that boys are better than girls. Not, not that this is in fact. The Quran, in fact, uh, shows that this is not correct to think that way. But, but the Quran is saying basically, since you think that way, you think that boys are better, why do you want to attribute daughters to God hmm. uh, as opposed, to, and then you want the sons for yourself? So that would be unfair. So that's how the, the, the verse reads now, the verses read now. In Surah Najm. In, in Surah Najm, mm -hmm. the 54th, 53rd chapter of the Quran, starting with the 19th verse. Now, the story uh, about this says that, uh, that, that regards the, regarding the satanic verses says that, um, well, when, when the, the, the Prophet, peace be upon him, recited the, um, that, you know, and Manat Thalithat al Ukhra and Manat the third, the other one, uh, then Satan threw in something into his recitation, hmm. uh, words that say uh, something like this um, um, These are the high flying cranes whose uh, intercession is to be desired mm -hmm. uh, or to be expected. So, uh, the, so, so that's what the Prophet, peace be upon him, recited and people heard and uh, they prostrated as a result because they thought, oh, now the Prophet, peace be upon him, has compromised with us. Uh, his strict monotheism <laughs> that bothered us uh, now is accommodating us with our uh, feminine deities our goddesses, and, uh, and so they were willing to go along with prostrating, praying along with the, with the Muslims, until uh, the angel Gabriel came to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and, and, and uh, asked him, can you recite to me what you were reciting? Uh, so the Prophet recited like that, including the verses that praise the feminine, the, the goddesses, and uh, then Gabriel says, well, you know what, that part is not from me, mm. that part is from the shaitan, so that has to go. And then, uh, obviously, it was excised, and uh, we have the resulting text now in the 53rd chapter of the Quran, which is a strict monotheistic text, um, uh, you know, criticizing them for thinking that God has uh, daughters. Mm -hmm. so, so that is what is referred to as the satanic verses. Mm -hmm. And of course, it becomes uh, uh, infamous because from an un-Muslim point of view, um, this is very strange. It would look like your prophet cannot distinguish between uh, what is satanic and what is from God. Exactly, at least not initially. But of course, Muslim scholars who defended this story, so some defended it, some criticized it, but among, those, uh, among the Muslims, those who defended the story uh, as being authentic uh, would say, well, uh, of course uh, it happened, but 
in the end, the Prophet, peace be upon him, made that distinction. And what he gave us in the end is purely from God. There's nothing satanic in there. Um, and the Quran, they will cite another verse of the Quran from the 22nd chapter uh, which, in the 52nd verse, which uh, seems, according to their opinion, to allude to this incident. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Shabir, how would you understand um, these narrations? Because we know that um, they mostly come from the biographies of the Prophet Muhammad and the exegesis of the Quran, right? So, what is your interpretation? Yeah, so, uh, the, um, uh, and you're right, it, it doesn't come from the most authentic uh, sources of hadith, uh, you know, narrating uh, events about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So, in Bukhari's narrative, for example, it, it, we have the story just as a straight reading of the 53rd chapter of the Quran, at the end of which uh, both the Muslims and the non-Muslims are prostrated. And now, um, the, the non-Muslim uh, Orientalists uh, have uh, looked at this and said, well, it must be true because Muslims would not have invented this. Why would they invent such a story to cast their prophet, uh, peace be upon him, in, a, in an um, you know, embarrassing, embarrassing mm -hmm. light? But uh, one Orientalist, uh, uh, John Burton, um, professor of Islamic studies at uh, the University of Edinburgh in Scotland, uh, wrote many books, but uh, a, uh, one of his articles uh, deals directly with, with this, and it's entitled, Those are the High Flying Cranes. And he's, he uh, posits that uh, two things could explain why Muslims would have come up with this story by themselves, or at least embrace it once it started to be bandied about. Uh, one is that Muslims wanted to explain things from the Quran that seemed obscure. So, for example, we, I refer to Surah 22, verse number uh, 52, uh, which basically says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ وَلَا نَبِيٍ إِلَّا إِذَا تَمَنَّا أَلْقَى الشَّيْطَانُ فِي أُمْنِيَتِهِ So, uh, whenever we have sent a prophet or a messenger, uh, Satan always threw something into his Omnia is the Arabic word. Omnia could be oh, his recitation, or it could also be his hopes. But, but scholars took it to be recitation. And so they, have, they, they want to have a story, like when, when did it ever happen that Satan did this? Mm -hmm. So they came up with a story mm -hmm. like this. Like an occasion, or, occasion of revelation. Yes, or at least embrace the story. The other thing is more complicated to explain. John Burton shows that uh, you know, Muslim scholars had this idea of abrogation, that there must have been some verses that were once in the Quran, but no longer there. Mm -hmm. and, and this story supports that contention that there were verses of the Quran that were removed. So here is a verse or a couple of verses that were uh, removed. So to him, it is uh, easy to explain this as a Muslim invention. And it's hard to conceive of this happening historically, because imagine the Prophet, peace be upon him, preaching a pristine monotheism, uh, then reneging on that to compromise, and then going back to the pristine monotheism. Uh, he wouldn't be able to convince people that he is genuine, uh, not, not Muslims or non-Muslims. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. Support us today and help us share. Guys, this is actually amazing. Guy. Like, this is actually the first time I... I came across this a long while ago, and I asked a friend to help me explain it, but he was not explaining so. I said I should check this out myself. So, but guys, I feel this is actually amazing. But I believe no one is perfect, and Prophet Muhammad being tempted by devil and reciting something from the devil. But I feel no one is perfect. Even if he's a prophet, he is not perfect because we are all humans, and things happen. Like things happen. This clay says that some verses were removed from the Quran and or corrected. I don't know. Please let me know in the comment section. Like I don't want to say some verses were removed or changed. Just let me know what really happened. Guys, just to like, just come and turn it. I'll see you next time, guys. Please.